get do the all right so let's we are doing what we are doing we are doing the yoga nidra all right okay so let's do yoga nidra to lie down flat follow the breath to so breathe in as you breathe in because breath is the most important part of yourself. You have 5% control, 95% is done by your subconscious. Actually, every part of your body is run by subconscious. It's just that you think you are doing everything. But the real action after you breathe, and we don't do the breathing properly anyway. We don't breathe deeply enough. We are not mindful when you are breathing. And if you are not mindful and thinking of properly breathing, Oxygenation doesn't happen. Oxygenation doesn't happen. You don't get intellect. Your memory goes away and slowly over 10, 15 years. So follow your breath through your nostril, down the windpipe, into your lungs. Watch as the oxygen is taken over by hemoglobin, by red blood cells, as it goes to the heart, which pumps to the 50 trillion cells in your body from head to toe. That's breathing in oxygen to atoms. Now breathe out. It's called apart. Concentrate on your belly button area now. As you exhale, watch the reverse. As the blow, blood flows back to heart, to lungs, and then carbon dioxide and other gases are taken out to the lungs. So at least oxygen and carbon dioxide, two atoms better than three atoms. So that's why when you know how to breathe properly, you can help metabolize food better in yourself or control weight. Breathing deeply. Third type of breath is called Samar. So Samar is reflective of sun inside your body, which is called Jatharagni, the power of energy. You are alive until you are warm, you are cold, you are dead. So that drives inside your body. So bring your breath above the belly button. Now watch as you breathe out the impact of your Samar and prana inside your body which gives the glow to your body the beauty of the skin the metabolism the drive inside you now breathe again fourth prana is called udar bring your attention as you breathe out to the heart heart is a machine pumps the blood out five liters of blood to the entire body which is reflective of 70 percent is fluid which is same as the ocean around earth it makes it survive the earth itself meets that water the body same way the fluidity of it. So be it brain is fluid in the fluid called cerebral spinal fluid or lung, pleura, heart in peritoneum, uh, sorry, pericardium or abdominal organs, spleen, uh, uh, pancreas, all are surrounded by fluid. So this fluidity of the body gives you uh, shitalta, cohesion. And because it's conduct, electrical conduction happens through the water. So your communication through brain, through spinal fluid, to the universe itself, if you want to tap into the abundance, you need to have this connection. So drinking water is very important, two to three liters of water a day, make sure you are hydrated properly, breathe in. Fifth, pran is called Vyan. So bring all the attention right as you breathe out from the head. Watch your body, 205 bones, 20,000 kilometers of blood vessels, 40,000 kilometers of nerves, brain, the largest CPU that we still have on any computer at that level, with billions of neurons in there. All this body is a powerhouse. Okay, so your subatomic level, even magnetic level, this thing functions at a physical plane. And then there are five other prans called Nar, Kuruma, Kadikal, they are the they are associated with the other functions within your body. Breathe deeply. The second component of your life is run by, apart from breath, is what? Food and water. So if you have proper food and water, then, okay. Express this thing. What happened? Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Might just uh, keep doing it. I can't fix something. There's okay. So, so the next part of the yogi nidra is concentrating, being mindful of your second important part, which is the breath. Ninety percent, ninety-nine percent is actually subconscious. That's why we go through those steps. Food also, you've got about 10% control of what you bring to your mouth. That is all the control. The rest is actually subconscious, which is the part of you, what you need to remind yourself and talk to your body. So being a human, you need to know, understand your body, what type of intestinal system you have, what type of eating you should do. So, and then ethical and moral values of people who talk about climate change and all that happens, what are we doing to the forest? We are, you know, cattle farming, all these things are destroying the soil, the water, the forest. And, uh, for, you know, you're not thinking about what you are doing, just picking things in coals and LDA and stuff doesn't mean that whatever goes behind the scene to bring stuff that you buy and bring to your home, it's your responsibility to be aware of it. Because when you put in your mouth, the foods that really start healing you are fruits and vegetables. So different colored fruits and vegetables need to chew them, not make smoothies or juices. You need to eat whole fruit. So different colored fruits and things, they start different uh, chemical processes. They have 40 centimeters of esophagus food that takes, it has to be soft food, not, you know, different foods, you can't even push them down. And the intestine system is very low, eight meters of small bowel, two meters of large bowel, and they contain about 40 trillion bacteria. And these bacteria live on foods which are called prebiotics, probiotics, which is legumes or soaked legumes overnight, fermented thing, fruits, vegetables. They're killed by soda, they're killed by alcohol, they're killed by refined foods, they are killed by foods that are packaged. So, you know, those food, those drinks that are the in fizzy drinks, foods that have been uh, have salt and other preservative in it and packet food, heating and eating, foods from outside, which have oil, which are reused, they all kill the bacteria inside you. So you have to be very careful of what you put in your mouth. Because it has a direct impact on the bacteria in your tummy. Because bacteria population is essential for a good health. So be preventing diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's, dementia, or cancers. Because the immune cells that are present within your tummy, they are more than 70% of the immune systems are within your intestinal tract. So if the right type of bacteria are not living, your immune system is out of line. It becomes like dysfunctional. It's hyperactive, then you get diseases like thyroiditis, kidney disease, skin disease, and other things, or so brain uh, loss of memory. If you have too low immune cells, then you get cancer. So you have to be very careful. It's not about ideology, religion, or anything. It's about looking after the bacteria in your tummy. That's why the food that are proper for that, those bacteria which are Trillions of them, more than our cells, there are more bacteria in our body, which are directly responsible for immune system and your other hormone production. That is the reason. Okay, so now bring the attention to the sides of your tummy. Watch the bean shaped structure called kidney. Again, 99% of it is done subconsciously. The least you can do is to avoid water, water, not other types of fizzy drinks and other things. Okay, so coconut water, normal water, things like that, natural water. Kidney, ureta, bladder, urethra. So filtration of blood happens every microsecond. That is beyond your control. And if it goes, then a lot of people these days have kidney failure. It's very sad to say, 
what are you, people are going through. Now bring your attention to your tips of your fingers, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, back of your neck, back of your body, follow the spine down, the bum, thighs, knee, right to the sole of your feet, in the front, come up, watch your ankles, your leg, your knee, just traveling through them, while you are going through them, your cells are responding to you. And if you have a state of positiveness in yourself, which is expressing gratitude, being joyful, being at peace, being appreciative of things, the cells become active in a very positive manner. If you have diseases and things, it heals it itself. But at the same time, if you are doing anything or any exercise which has anger, jealousy, hatred, ill will, negativities in you, they put the cells in a negative cycle. And you get arthritis, you get joint disease, you get swelling, you get muscle problem, you get brain problem. I said in the beginning, thoughts become your electrical impulses in your body. They are sending messages to your cells. Okay, come up right to the pelvic area, you know, spinal cord, tailbone, stay there. See the difference on the left side is called Ida, on the right side is called Pingla, in the middle it's called Pingla uh, Sushumna. The left side is associated with presence of moon, which is associated with secretion of end organ hormones in your body. On the right side, associated with sun, positioning of sun, earth spinning around the sun. Okay, it's called circadian rhythm. As I said, each cell has a cycle, it's its own clock. So it has direct impact on your brain function, which is the pituitary gland, master endocrine gland. So that's why you need to sleep on time, wake up on time, so that your rhythmic hormone secretion happens properly. Because there are 15, 16 hormones secreted which have direct effect on your blood vessels, your nerves, your endocrine cells, your organs. Everything is run by the master gland on the top. And that is directly related to the cell, uh, what's called circadian rhythm. And just beneath it is called pineal gland. It's a gland in which you connect with these electrical impulses, there are crystals in it which make you communicate with the the true self that you are beyond this physical body which is passed into your subtle body past your time and space with the energy self that you are if you want to communicate with it you want real happiness then it lies there and down it's called thyroid parathyroid gland there's called bone marrow mother mother asti so your your stem cells there's reserve cells of every body cells in your body heart brain included but if you don't know how to tap into it you can't heal that's why you, your pharmacy, so the other day I talk on inner pharmacy of your body. How can you tap into this inner pharmacy that is there? You will only close your inner pharmacy if you keep depending on the outside pharmacy. You need to keep this open, the inner pharmacy, learn how to tap into your stem cells. All these hormones, all these things are produced in the body. But the uh, today's system is, is a profit-based capitalistic society where you need to make money. And nobody is thinking of you. Please ex that understand that. Everybody is thinking gold is money now and everybody is thinking of profit. Nobody is looking after anyone. Don't be fooled by... And you know, government allows eh, to TVs to lie in certain limit to fool the people in terms of advertisement. Don't get carried away by things. You need to use your brain. Understand there is a reason why something is done, why they repeatedly bombard you with information so that your brain accepts it. Okay, so, so choose properly. So keep going down. Your thyroid, your parathyroid, all the way, adrenal gland. They are the fight, fight, flight response. You can nobody can live in stress all the while your body will be destroyed. And that's what's happening in modern society. You can balance it by what's called vasovagal tone, which is from the brain. And yoga, these kind of exercises actually stimulates your creativity, rest, repair, regeneration in your body. You get beauty of your face, health. Your breathing becomes better. Your heart rate is controlled. Your peristalsis of food flows down. Your spleen works better. Kidney works better. Your adrenal glands come to rest. So th that this is how you need to actually understand, have the knowledge and work on yourself.
then you will live in this world of everything, but you will still be protected. Otherwise, you blindly follow that you are finished like everyone else. You, you, you get diseased, you get all these problems. Now bring your attention right on the top to your two eyes that you have, two ears, two nostrils, your tongue. We, we utilize only 10% of the capability of our senses even. Like the brain, we use only maybe 5 to 8% at most. All the senses are not even utilized. Because to really utilize them, you need to go past this physical body into subtle form of who you are. Because that expression, which is related to your using of your brain or your understanding of your body itself, is subconscious. It's not being actively thinking that you are expressing the total capacity of your senses or your brain, your, your understanding the physiology of this body, you need to go beyond that. So that is the test of uh, being a human. Trust this barrier and going into that. Because the balance lies from there. By accident, when you are innocent as a child, when you are growing up, we are able to bring certain things in our life. And don't go to get me wrong. That is why we, we, we are uh, bringing success in our life to this limit. But it is very minimal. The, the level that a human can reach is far beyond. Okay, so each of these senses or your expression from your the way we speak, the way we use our hand, leg, reproductive organs, excretory organs, all are these antennas to the body. And these antennas run through signals in your cells. So that's why eating ghee is a good thing rather than eating other type of fat, little bit. Or, you know, reuse food from foods that are made in restaurants and things. So there is a lipid layer in your cells which is actually getting the signals to this body. And this skin, how it's made, the brain is made in a similar manner. And realistically, when you are a little too self, when you are being made into a human being, they are similar and realistically. So reception of it happens there, which actually acts on protein and it expresses in your body. The behavior that we get, the perception that we express is actually through this signaling system in this body. So there's, there's depth to it, there's science to it. It's not only I'm talking about it. Okay, so that's the physical part of it. Now bring your attention right to the tailbone where it started, follow up to the spine, Muladhar, Swadishna, Manipur, Anahar, Vishuddhi, Trikuti, Anjana, or Sahasra. Now you can connect this self to your subtle body or outer body experience, okay? Because you as a human being, you know, as your mind travels far away, you can actually travel with it too in a positive manner. So see yourself at the International Space Station for 500 kilometers above. Now you can look yourself from the ceiling that this body is just a, like a car, as a physical body only. The drivers are beyond that. So you can travel with this mind and you can watch as it's spinning now or twisting or position of moon about 384 kilometers from us or Sun about 153 million kilometers from here. The distance of these locations of our nine planets and the sun and moon totally have direct impact on your subtle body, beyond this physical body. So you have to understand that the space and the planetary system to help you reach your subtle body and beyond that your causal body. Without understanding the space and the creation itself, you can't open up enough your brain to be able to receive the signal or go beyond it. Milky Way. Because Akash Ganga, Virat, Hiranyagarbha is described like a oval shape. Takes 250 million years for sun to spin within there. So we have done 22 cycles, which is halfway. And then finally about 5, 4.5 billion years from now, it will crash with another Milky Way like planet called Andromeda. And beyond that, there are multiverses. In that context, you understand the person that you are is an energy based person that's called parallel universe. And this is now a science. This is beyond only in our like yogic thing, I'm telling you. There's a parallel self of you who is energy based. And that is all that is what is called about receiving moksha 
and emancipation of person who is enlightened, they receive themselves in their energy form, which is already there. But you are experiencing the creator's creation, which is earth by your physical senses. In its limitation, you can be fooled by this illusion of Maya or ego. But if you are to feel the abundance of and experience this creation in depth, you need to get that energy level. So it's called event horizon where time, space, mass, energy, wave particles, gravity, black hole, or quasar light, or pulsar light. Beyond that, there's no limitation. Time is a human construct. And you become like we become slaves to it. We, we don't realize we are beyond time and space. So at that level, your brain actually is beyond third dimension, fifth dimension. It can go up to 25 dimensions. Imagine at that dimension, what is the capability of a human being? So you will then understand what cosmic horizon is on the Satya Sukhim that describes this space, the darkness of that, everything that is beyond. Who knows what is beyond that? is a feeling only that that energy within that so that's how we move from this situation called you know, getting to silence or solitude because once you learn what is silence and what is infinity and what is dark energy then you really know what is the vibration not this what we might know is. This is very limited, 5 to 10 percent. It's actually the the whole formula lies in silence itself. Because when you calm this physical noise that we have, then you, people call that silence. It's actually not silence. It's actually energy, which is got abundance. It's got all the secrets of life in there. You slowly bring yourself down back to your physical body. Okay. In this period of what's called yoga nidra, you heal your body because you go through this subconscious, which is the the healing or creativity action of the body. And as you understand the depth of the creation, your brain waves start changing, and you start getting what's called brain and heart coherence, because that is the secret of actually understanding deeper of who you are. And everyone is trying to find that thing, but I, certainly people don't know what to do about it. Okay, so sit, sit up. So that when you do physical exercise, you do need to have some rest, and that's the reason, you know, why you have a relaxation, which is like <clears throat> lying, you know, you rested. But with that, you do yoga nidra, you magnify the impact of your rest. Okay, now we do exercises. Okay, the best is Bastika Pranayam. So, breathing in through your nostrils, push your belly button out, do the opposite. So, when the when you breathe, breathing out, push the belly button in. So these exercises are even harder than the, the asanas that we did. Because these are now involving each of the muscles which are really involved with your internal body functions, your nerves, your blood vessels, your connections to your brain. Yeah, so. You understand oxygenation, as I said, is the medicine for your brain cells. If you get good oxygen, 
you'll never get memory loss. You'll get intelligence. But because it is free, nobody will give any respect to it. That's a human being nature. Because our mind is set on money, about money. Because we are all programmed from very young days as, well, you know, money is, is the currency of everything. So oxygen is not respected even. Okay, so that's how you remain intelligent. You want good brain function. You have good breathing exercises. Okay, now next one. So, so after Vastika, breathe in deeply, breathe out, eh? and hold the breath, push your belly button out in it. Agni sir. Breathe in deep, breathe out, hold the breath as long as you can, and that time push your belly button out and in. <laughs> you know how fasting helps? Remove zombie cells, which then cell, essence cells or dead usually and gives you long healthy life. But holding breath magnifies your level of functional capacity. Again, the mega you don't have time we do only three times each of them in your time you can do more okay let me start now so the throat okay so feeling the vibrations in your throat so as you breathe in So as you, you feel the air okay, traveling in, as you take it down your windpipe, as you're taking out, feel it. So variation of this, put your chin on the chest. <clears throat> Lift your neck, close your right nostril, breathe out to the left. <clears throat> So Ujjayi Pranayam, breathe in. <clears throat> now, breathe in through your tongues. If you can, twist your tongue. Put your tongue tip top of your mouth and breathe out through the nostrils. <clears throat> Now breathe in through your lips, out through your nostrils. See how cold you feel when you breathe in through that way? So when there's a lot of heat, you can use that. But the other one, through your tongue, if it's too cold, you can use it to warm yourself. So breath is like air conditioner in itself. Does lots of function, lots of things to your body. Now we do. By um, Vriti, so deep breath in, then we take out the breath for Vahi Vriti, all of it out, and hold it for Vahi Kumbak. When you hold it, squeeze inside. Okay, so Mulban, Jalandanban, Udanban, which means you can put your chin down as well. So breathe in. Abhantravriti, Vai Vriti, Vai Kumbha.
when you can't hold the breath anymore, then breathe. So it's a subtle mind showering of your subtle body now. Like external body, everything that we do is actually talking about your other tamasic, rajasic, or sattvic state, your physical body, your mental body, or your atmic level. Everything is being done in that manner. Okay, so, so just be aware of it. Okay, so, so that's why we do asanas and things. Then we do breathing exercise. It is now connecting to your subtle body. So, Avantar with the Vai with Vai Kumbak, when you breathe in, it's like showering your nerve plexus inside your body. There's 22,000 nadias. <laughs> So like food and water nourishes your physical body, breath nourishes your subtle body. Hmm? Breathe in. Out. Hold it. So Swami Dayana and other people who renown the people who reach this level of being able to do the you know and everybody knows about Swami Dayana about he could hold breath for half an hour when people wanted to kill him many times he had to hide under water. If you don't know how to hold your breath, how can you be under water? And this is the saddest part of it. A lot of people in our you know group who even follow Swami Dayana haven't learned what he did in his life. To become who he is. And why I became so confident in what I'm doing now, even all following all the Vedic tradition, is because I went to understand his life or how he became who he is. Otherwise, I wouldn't feel comfortable in myself. I would say, oh, I'm not doing the right thing, actually. So breathe in one more time. So, showering of your subtle body, okay? Under the safai. Pran shakti se hoti hai. Eventually, when he became Swami Dayanand, when Virjanan sent him to do the social work and improving the life of the world, he was beyond all the things, but there were steps that made him into there. And that's what I studied about. Him. What made him? What, what he attained before he reached Swami Virajana who sent him to do all these other things which, which we are following. So these are the steps of it. To be able to hold your breath. To be able to write, to be able to talk about where Sanskrit, every religion, every book within the short period of life that he had, 50 years of life. How, where did it come from? Where, how did he become who he became? That is. That's what we should know, actually. All right. Now, next is. Called Vastika Pranayam. Vastika Pranayam, as well Vastika we've done, Agnisar we did, Ujjayi we did, we did Sital, we did now Abhayatrapiti. So we are left with Kapal Bhati. Kapal Bhati, Kapal is your top of your head, communication, 
reopening metaphorically in your lifetime is the goal. Because then Atma joins with Paramatma. Like if you heat up iron, yeah, road, you put in fire, after about one hour, it becomes like a fire. It still is iron, but it becomes like a fire. It hasn't lost its form because if you put fire goes out, it will again become an iron road. But if you, when you merge, you merge in that manner. Not that you become Paramatma, but Atma, Paramatma ka Milan. So it, which is metaphorically opening up your fontanel. Once you come in the human life to experience this beauty of creation, it gets closed at two years of our age, and the rest of the life is you are present by brain waves, by your thought processes, which initially lead you how to survive this life, but after 30 years becomes a prison house because you are programmed into it. And that's why it's very hard to come out of it. To get out of this prison of yourself requires, as you can understand, effort, energy, a, a complete dedication to relink yourself with what actually you wear before two years as a baby, you know? You wear. When you're born, you wear. But it's gone. All right, so Kapal Bhati is the exhalation exercise. You breathe out. You create a vacuum, air gets sucked in. Don't concentrate on that. Just keep doing it in a rhythmic manner at whatever rate you can do. Keep your back straight. It pushes this, all those energy that I talked about from Muladhar right to the Sahasra level. 